Hey folks, I got some more really cool stone technology to share with you this week. You'll see the stone right here, if you'll look. It looks just like a snake's head, a rattlesnake's head, and it even has the white streak right below the eye. And this stone is just a stone that has streaks near the edge of it. And you can make these out of stones that, you know, dark stones like this that have a streak running down the edge. And they look extremely realistic. And in ancient times, Neolithic times, stones like this would have been used as lures to hunt with. So you try to use this snake to attract a bird or some other animal that hunts snakes. And then you're, of course, hunting the animal. Yeah, but the stone... The stone fakes the snake so that you can use a lure without having to, well, use the dangerous real snake in the case of you're using rattlesnakes. But those are really, really cool. And also, um, it was an important skill for people at that time to be able to turn a stone into an animal-like figure that, you know, is astonishingly real. Like, uh the poison dart frog that I was showing off on another video those look really good and but they were they, they were lures they actually hunted with those and they relied on those to fake animals to be able to catch uh, food with and but not all stones are, are just meant to you know look a certain way most stones that were made back then all had a function like a really simple neolithic bowl is just a broken stone like this one that has a a shallow dip in it. You can put a small puddle of oil or a small puddle of pine sap on that and burn it and it'll make a fine bowl. But you can also make them like this. You, you, can, uh, you can hollow out a bowl or use a shell or something like that. And this one here is a crab motif. You can see it's got three stones. It looks like a, looks like a crab. You can see the claws. And right there is uh, a wick that I use that's made out of bracket fungus and of course you know the bracket funguses they look like this you know this is a a horse's hoof bracket that comes off of dead oak trees and you, know, you get that off a of dead oak tree slice it up into little slices and it makes a wonderful pine sap wick or, or a, an oil wick or a candle wick and um, then you use this for an oil lamp. And also, this stone vessel right here, too, it, it also will serve as a mortar and pestle for grinding up seeds, grinding up you know, small amounts of herbs, uh, grinding stones to make paints and colors out of. You can do a lot of jobs uh, with grinding with one of these, even as small as it is. You see, it's just, you know, barely two inches square. But that's how all the tools were in the late Neolithic and, and early uh, Bronze Age or early Copper Age all the stone tools were extremely tiny and here, here's another lamp right here that I've got that's also a mortar and pestle and you can see I've got this bird hanging off the back of it see it's an eagle I, I did a really careful job of shaping it just right so it really really looks like an eagle and inside there you see there's three eggs so the stylish motive what I want to see when I'm not using this is I, I want to see a bird hanging off the edge of a nest you know, there's a there's a worm right there and but when I'm not using when, when I'm not using this for a candle and I want to uh, say I want to grind some salt up What you do is you use the larger stone to crush down the big rocks and you make, you, you make small, small gravel out of it. Then you put that inside the bowl and you use the worm as your mortar and pestle. And it's just the right size and shape to grind the material up into a dust in just a matter of seconds. So it's, even, though it's, even though it's such a tiny tool, it does an extremely efficient job of grinding seeds, grinding salt, um, you know, crushing nutmeg, anything like that, uh, it'll make ready work of it. And even though it, even though it's tiny, 
it does a really quick job. Now, this right here, that right there is a a, a yellow stain. It's a, a a honey honey quartz, honey colored quartz, and. Uh, I usually make like honey dippers and stuff out of it. See, I drilled a hole in this. I'll put a put a rod in it and use it for a honey dipper. But the thing about these kind of stones, these glassy stones, is you can eat off of them. They, they don't transfer toxins. They're not dusty and dirty or anything like that. They won't make you sick or anything. Unless you grind a stone that has copper. I mean, if you grind two co st stones that contain copper together, you'll get something off of that. But if you, you know, like like clean quartz, if you're if you're eating off of you know stuff made out of, out of clean quartz, you're gonna be okay because it's a clean stone. It can be made really smooth too. So it's like you know, it's like eating off a off a metal spoon as opposed to eating off of a wooden spoon. You know, most stones have a granular structure to them, and if you Put that in your mouth. It's like yeah, putting putting a wooden spoon in your mouth. But quartz, you know, quartz and stones like that, they're really really smooth. So ancient peoples uh, used those when they were dealing with food. They would use a glassy stone or even even man-made glass. And so every one of these stones has a function. Like this, this stone back here. This one that I just set back up. And I knocked over. It's a nut and seed cracker. And yeah, the motive that I look at, the, you know, my decorative part, what I want to look at when I'm not using it. So I've got two leaves and two uh, caterpillars, basically, two silkworms. And, but those four little tools I use to crush and break up all my walnuts, my uh, just any kind of seed or seed or nut or anything like that. And you want to crush even um well, even cinnamon bark. You can process cinnamon bark with them too. But uh, yeah, they're they're not just to look at. They actually have a uh, a function that that they're used for. And um, all of them are you know pretty tiny sets. And you see here, I got the set of dice that I made. This camera will focus. I've got this set of dice here that I made. This stone is basalt. It's a black basalt. And this one is a green and white quartz. See, it's got white spots all over it. So, in ancient times, games were really important. So, and making these cubes is surprisingly difficult. I mean, it's not easy to make a cube. But ga games were extremely important back in Neolithic times and you know, even like the Copper Age, Bronze Age and all that. So there was all kinds of games that were developed in that, that period, like like Dice and uh, games like Senate and the other games that are based on, you know, the, the common board games that we have today where you have stone, stone pieces that you move around on a board. All of those games were developed back in the very earliest, uh, you know, Neolithic and uh, Copper Age. So I hope you agree that this stuff is really neat and, you know, um, as far as stones like this go, you know, I practice the ancient technique of, of hooking the stones together because this stone, this stone has a, a bevel on it that reaches downward and when you set the two stones together, they just, it fits, it fits on the corner of the other stone where it hangs on, it locks onto it like a hand holding on and it it just won't fall off. So it's a really uh, good arrangement of doing that. And it's also, it also demonstrates one of the oldest stone working techniques that exists is making that, that uh, fetch in, in the stone where you can lock two, two stones together and they won't fall apart. So it, it demonstrates that skill. And another technique that was developed back then that I'd like to show you Sorry about that.
You see this stone right here? This is like a man, you know, man-made glass. You can see it has it has stones sticking out of it. This is just molten slag that was poured out onto a gravel and in front of a uh, in front of a kiln or whatever. And but if you take a stone like this that, that has that has a cutting point on it like that, you can use it on a lathe. You know, you can use it just like you would a lathe. You can use that that stone point to cut with. And you can cut wood, you can cut other stone. And depending on what this stone is, determines how hard you know a stone you can cut with a tool like that. And so these would have been made quite quite commonly. I mean the 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 gravel pile below the below the kiln. Uh, whenever they'd empty the slag out, they'd pour that that slag out over the gravel and they'd drag it out, drag it out, and make different shapes, and they would try to make tools out of it. And this is one of those tools that they made. And of course, the harder your gravel is, the harder the stones of your gravel that's below the kiln, uh, the harder your cutting tools are going to be that you get out of it. So it would have been a very thoughtfully, and very carefully engineered thing. And so that's a high level of intelligence right there. And as you can see, the stone has a you know it has a flat butt on the bottom of it. I mean, this is just a complete piece right here. And I can assure you it's man-made glass and it's just got uh, river river gravels in it. Really hard river river gravels. And but this was melted, poured out onto a pile of gravel, and sc scraped out and separated from the main bulk so that the little pieces of it would cool off and then I got this right here. And now this can be used as a as a cutting tip to operate a lathe. Because I can use it like a lathe point. And it will, it'll cut just like a lathe point. As long as you set it up right. These stones can even be sharpened. You know, if this if this isn't sharp enough, you can sharpen that stone. You can sharpen that stone and just cut whatever you want, however you want. And it's just as efficient as the modern tool. And that's the great thing about it. I'm Trapper Jack, thank you for watching.